So I'm going to ask you to pipe up just so I uh, know that you are here and that folks can also hear you. Sure, absolutely. This is Melissa Buckley. Terrific. Thank you. And for everyone else who's joined in, this is Gina Brown with the ABA. We'll start a minute or two after the hour to give uh, everyone a time to join, whether it be a phone or webinar or both. If you do have questions for me, for those who are on the webinar, I would love it if you would send us those via the chat feature in the webinar, and those will show up on the platform. Uh, let's see, I ask folks to mute themselves, and it sounds like everyone's doing a great job of that thus far. That makes sure we don't pick up your computer background noise, airport background noise, uh, city background noise, anything, and just make sure everyone can hear us. All right, I'm going to give my spiel one last time, and then we will get going here. I think we will roll through this fairly quickly, but then uh, Melissa Buckley and I on the staff will stick, along, stick around as long as folks have questions. Uh, we will be here to answer them, and you will know how to reach us <laughs> after the webinar if you have questions. Um, uh, within this platform, please mute yourselves. Uh, and we, If we're picking up background noise, I can mute you. Uh, and if I mute you, please don't unmute yourself unless you have a particular uh, dying question you need to ask us. Otherwise, if I've muted you, it means we're picking up background noise that's disruptive. Um, we, will, we are recording this, and we will share that recording and the presentation slides with all presenters after the program. So if you want to hear us again or want to make sure that your colleagues get this program, uh, you will have that opportunity. Uh, any questions you have, again, uh, shoot me via the chat feature within the uh, uh, webinar platform. Um, I am going to see if Kelly Olson, one of our Spring Conference standing chairs, is out there and can do a quick welcome for everyone. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Hi, this is Kelly. I don't know if everybody got that. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad everyone is here to participate. Um, and we are really excited about the conference and everybody that is going to be participating. So please do let us know if you have any questions about this or other things um, after the call. All right. Terrific. Just quickly, we thought we'd give you the visuals of the voices you're hearing and uh, any you know, quick contact information for how to find us for questions you have after the program today. I'll do just a really quick rundown of the you know, what is involved with the Spring Conference. I know many of you have participated in the Spring Conference in the past. Many of you have not. Uh, this is our 19th annual Spring Conference, which uh, seems somewhat unbelievable. Um, we're expecting approximately seven to 800 attendees from all over the country and even the globe. So. Um, uh, there will be a lot of folks here, and that number really varies year to year. We, we cannot predict whether the, the week is great on the calendar for folks. If, if San Francisco is the city that folks want to be in this year, um, so that's, that's a reliable number that we're hoping to have. There will be about 100 educational programs over the four days of the conference from the 19th to the 22nd. We have about 300 presenters on those many programs, and uh, at least we like to think we cover every topic in the dispute resolution <laughs> universe. So uh, once you all are able to see the entire program, I think you will also be you know, really happy that you're on the program and uh, see the, the, just the range and diversity of programs that will be part of the conference. Kelly, 
can I toss the slide to you? Yes, I'm sorry. I just take some minutes to get off of moot. <laughs> um, the, uh, we want to make sure that the audience appreciates you as much as we as much as they can. And one of the ideas is that we know that everybody has great content, but we need to aim the content at this particular audience. And so think about who is going to be at your particular session. Who is your audience? Are you aiming this at new people? Um, what does your description say about what you're speaking about? And we all have great things that we want to talk about, but what do you think your title and your presentation description say about what the presenters want to hear? What do they need to learn? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to walk out the door with? Um, they, people love materials. They love to have background information. And we want to make sure that the stage is adequately shared between the presenters. Um, if there's a reason why it's not split equally, if you, ha if you plan on having someone just be a moderator or just be a, um, they maybe a responder to someone else's information, just make sure that that's identified beforehand, and that would be great. Um, if, if, you know, it does help to have uh, people be timed and know how much they're going to have to speak. Many of you know all these things. This is more for people that haven't done this before. But we have a pr pretty sophisticated audience at these sessions. Some of them might be new to DR, but they're not new to presentations. And so we try to make sure that we have both the content and the presentation style that is very professional and works for our audience. Awesome. Thanks. So I'm then going to start moving through all of these bits and pieces that we need from you as presenters. And we realize <laughs> we ask a lot from you. Uh, and we as staff are dealing with you know, those 300 presenters. We try to make sure that everything is as perfect as possible on site. And that is why we ask for these things early. And we, uh, we ask for things to be final and done so that we can present the great conference agenda and all of you as our conference faculty out to our potential and definite attendees as soon as possible so we can feature your programs and feature you within all of our conference marketing materials. Um, first here is presenter agreement and Melissa is going to talk about this. Okay. So uh, this is really the first thing we're asking from each presenter. It's a really quick online form. It takes about a minute to fill out. And it really just has two purposes. So the first is that it has fields for you to give us what you want your speaker listing to be. So your full name, your middle initial if you want that included, and your affiliation. And then there's also a box at the end of the form that you click just to acknowledge that you have reviewed the presenter guide, which we sent out. It's just basically a summary of everything you need to know. It's a PDF, and it's, it's really essentially this webinar in a PDF form. Um, so the link to the presenter agreement is here on this slide. And if you haven't done it already, we just ask that you fill it out by the end of the day today, December 1st. Um, and just one other thing I wanted to point out about this, we only need one presenter agreement per presenter. So I know it's kind of confusing if some people are speaking on multiple sessions, but again, we just need one per person. Okay. Awesome. Uh, deadlines, we have lots of them. Uh, next Monday, the 5th, is, a, is our Beyond the Speaker Agreement, our first big deadline. And this is when we need to know if you want to change your session title, if the program review committee perhaps encourage you to change your session title. We need it at this point. Uh, a change description, because that description is what we will use out there on our website and our app to encourage people to come into your program. Um, we need that next Monday. Uh, if you're adding or changing any presenter from when you gave us the proposal, we need that by next Monday. <laughs> um, the, if you wanted to do the program for CLE, and we'll talk a little bit more about what CLE means later, 
audiovisual requests. This may seem kind of insane, but we need the audiovisual requests now that helps us make the schedule, helps assign your program to the right room uh, for your type of program. Any particular room setup requests, if you really need to have round tables for your room, if you only need chairs, uh, things like that, we need to know that now. Uh, those are the kinds of requests that if you um, call Melissa or me on April 18th and say you need this stuff, it, it will be a flat no. And in fact, if you say it on March 1st, <laughs> it will also be a no. We need to have all of these things in place now so that we can plan the program and the space very well for the conference. Um, present your biographies and pictures. And again, we'll, we'll tell you in a little bit uh, more detail on how we want that. Um, and request for a one program pass. All due next Monday. Uh, things that you can put off for a little bit. Uh, the presenters register and pay for the conference fees, speaker releases, and the program and presentation materials due uh, February 2nd. Uh, programs that have CLE materials, we definitely need those programs by February 2nd. And I'll talk through some of these variations um, in a little bit. But uh, those three things you can put off past December 5th. Um, Melissa is going to Tina, talk a little bit is, on our, yeah. Sorry, this is Kelly. Um, I walked right out of another meeting into this one. So let me just reiterate, this is where on the 5th, that's why we would love it if you would revisit your session title and description to make sure that it is going to match up with your audience. Um, and then make sure that any changes you want to make are made by next Monday. Um, if you know we accepted it and there were no comments on it, it's good to go. Then just make sure that the materials that you are put, pulling together by February match up with what that description and title are. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, oops, I'm sorry. Melissa is going to walk you just quickly describe how to make a program change. This is a link that was sent to session organizers. Melissa. All right. So um, I emailed each of the session organizers a program edit link. So a screenshot of that email is to the left if you need to search for it at all in your inbox to find it. Um, but this link is really important because that's what takes you back to your original program proposal. Um, so again, if you know that you need to make any of the changes that Gina just talked about, whether you need to tweak your title, or you need to add a presenter on or submit a scheduling request, that's what you do on this form. Um, but just a quick note to emphasize, even if you don't really need to make any changes, I'll ask that every session organizer click this link and go through it. Um, firstly, just so they can confirm that their program, or their program information is the way they want it. Um, but second, because we went ahead and added a few fields into the form, we figured while you're in there completing that, uh, you could also give us your AV request there, your room set request there. So those forms are, those fields are added into the form. Um, and just to emphasize, all of this information is due by December 5th, next Monday. All right, thank you. So I wanted to talk to you through just a moment the schedule of programs because we will, um, we will as soon as we can after next Monday, we will be trying to set the final schedule of programs. And this is one of the reasons we, we need this information from you guys now so that we can look through any constraints you have, any possible conflicts of topics uh, and presenters and make sure that we can get out a schedule both so that you all can plan your uh, conference travel and that we can get that agenda out to folks who are interested in coming in to um, the program uh, and attend the conference. When uh, Melissa sent an email on 11-7 to folks, that email identified the uh, tentative likely day that we would schedule your program. So look at that. Um, that's sort of one clue and we will work from there. If folks have a conflict with the day that we tentatively assigned you, we need, we need to know that by the 5th on Monday. 
Um, and you can let us know that via that program edit link that Melissa was just showing you. We will notify all presenters no later than the first week of January of what that final program lineup is. If we can get it out earlier, we can get it out earlier. Okay. Um, and just so you know, a tentative conference schedule at a glance is available now on the conference website. It just lays out the, the larger time frames of the conference. It doesn't assign specific concurrent sessions as of yet. Uh, but just if you want to know the broader outline of the program, that is available now for you. I, I don't know if you can hear me. This is Tim Hicks, and for some reason I have lost uh, the uh, – I went to my um, mail program to check whether I had got received the email from you. I did, but when I went back to the WebEx meeting, it's not letting me back in. Any suggestion? Hmm. I don't have a quick solution for you. One option is to completely get out. It's saying <laughs> when I go again. yeah, when I go back to join again, it's saying it's saying that I'm already. Uh, in another okay. meeting, you already have one meeting in progress. You can start or join a new meeting after you leave the previous meeting. That's fun. Um, we are recording this, and I will share the slides and the recording with you after the fact. So you'll, you'll get our voices live, and uh, you will have an opportunity to see the visual. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thanks. Um, Tim, you're actually, I can see you. So you're still yeah. in the meeting somehow. It might just be I don't know how to get minimized or something. You, I would either suggest getting out of it, or I mean, it, it, you're you're still here. <laughs> yeah. Somehow. How do I? I don't know how to get out of it because I don't have a screen to work with. It's just saying you already have one meeting in progress. But I don't want to take your time. I just. Okay. If you had a quick fix, that would be yeah. great. But if you don't. I'll listen. Uh, Lainey Feingold was just telling me that uh, for her, the meeting is an app, not in her browser. I don't know if that helps you at all, but uh, uh, that I'm, was, she I'm apparently in the browser. experienced the same uh, thing that you did. Uh -huh. okay. um, and I'm sorry, Tim. Um, the, yep. uh, it, uh, I wanted to talk for a moment about educational programs being CLE and non-CLE. The way we do our ABA section of dispute resolution spring conference is that we do not put every program through the CLE lens. We have a number of programs that are not intended to meet CLE, that are not intended for a lawyer audience, often that are attended, intended for you know, a neutral audience that is not necessarily a lawyer audience. So we give presenters the option of telling us that they uh, want to be CLE or they do not want to be CLE. Um, the way it, it looks like it is shaking out is that about 75% of the programs will be CLE and 25% will be not CLE. Uh, for the CLE programs, there are additional requirements. There are significant hoops that we have to go through, include they, they must have written materials. We encourage it for everyone else. It must be for CLE programs. There must be a presenter on the program who is licensed to practice law in a U.S. jurisdiction, and that's just a few of those requirements. Um, when we get the final lineup of CLE and non-CLE programs, that's one of those things we need to know by December 5th, uh, we will then start indicating that on our, uh, our conference agenda that we put out for folks in the world. Um, I also wanted to take some time to really pause here and talk about audiovisual and, and technology um, because we are doing this is a massive uh, conference that we do. There are certain standard things that we provide, certain things that you can also ask for, and uh, things that we cannot and will not do. Uh, so for sessions, there's a, a standard head table for four. If there are more presenters than four, we will adjust the room for that, but that's our standard. There will be two wired microphones on the head table. We set it up so that there are two panel, you know, two, one microphone per each panelist. Um, and we will have standard an LCD data projector and screen. Um, 
we will not provide lavalier or handheld mics. So just kind of <laughs> accept that. Don't let that be a surprise for you as of um, April 20th when you walk into your room. We cannot provide and cannot guarantee internet access in the meeting rooms. I know you're all saying, oh my, you know, we are, we are December 2016, how can this be? Internet access within the hotel is uh, crazy expensive and we have found it's often not reliable. Uh, this may, it may be that when you walk into the room there is actually an internet connection, but it's something that we cannot guarantee at this point. It varies by hotel, it varies by room within the hotel. Believe me, it's incredibly frustrating <laughs> to me. I hear you, um, but I want you all to be aware of that. We also do not provide laptops. So if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation or projecting anything on the screen, someone from the panel needs to bring a laptop and then be aware of making sure you have special adapters, particularly, I'm sorry, for you Mac users, uh, they often are really vexing for the AV systems within the hotels. Um, so just make sure that any needs that you have are communicated to us by December 5th. And I'm going to talk just for a moment to pause. I know this is a, a tricky question. Sound. If you need to project a video that will have sound or will have any sound other than you know, the presenter speaking from the podium with the microphone, let us know that. It is something that we need to have extra setup in the room. And I can guarantee you, <laughs> if you show up on April 19th and go, oh yeah, we just decided to show this video, um, we will not be able to provide sound. If you're planning now and you let us know now, we can make sure that a sound support system is in place for your program. The, the other piece of the sound issue is that we're, we're going to try to make sure that rooms um, are not next to each other that are doing a lot of videos so that you can hear what's going on in your room and not necessarily competing with the room next to you. So please do let us know by Monday about what you want to do for sound. Right, that is a great point. We are really constrained with this within this hotel. We are using every space possible, which means that some spaces will have air walls and we want, it's one of the many reasons we want to know a lot of information now so that we can carefully plan programs so they do not um, impede with each other in, in sound or in any other way. Um, Kelly, can I ask you to address the, um, this and the following presenter registration slides? Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so there is a discounted registration rate for the panelist contribution. Um, we appreciate that everybody is helping us to have a great conference by presenting, um, but we do need everybody to register and we want everybody to register by February 2nd so we make sure that we know who's coming, who's definitely going to come and present. Um, there is a one-day registration if that's the only time that you can be at the conference. Um, that's also at a discounted rate for the presenters. We are limiting um, this year scholarships and waivers because of we found that last year people sort of waited to the last minute and asked us for waivers and wanted to come or wanted someone on their presentation. We really are going to be strict about either a scholarship has to be for the first time that anyone has attended. Um, oh, there we go. Sorry, that's the next slide. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. Um, if you're not coming for the conference or for the day, um, you can have a one-time uh, $50 program pass to be able to present on your program. And then if we have people from outside the area, which we frequently do, they can have a free one program pass um, just to attend their session. That wouldn't be somebody that was coming for the day. We would like them to use the discounted one day pass. Um, if someone on your panel or you is looking to do this, please apply now so we can figure out what the, um, the numbers are and how that's going to look. Um, the deadline is Monday, and what we're trying to do is limit, again, the requests that come in 
when we hit that February deadline, then all of a sudden we start to get requests because people are like, oh, I should have registered. Oh, maybe I'm not going to come to the whole conference. Can I just come for my session or can I come for the day? We're trying to, you know, do the budgeting very carefully this time, and that means that we're trying to get everyone registered way in advance um, so we know what to expect. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Melissa, you want to talk briefly about speaker releases? Sure. Uh, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. We need a speaker release um, for each event that we do from each presenter. Uh, the good news actually is they've changed it. Uh, hopefully it will be a lot easier for you. It's now an online form. Um, so you can just click the link that is on this slide right here and just submit it to us that way online. And even if you want to say you wanted to submit any revisions to the language of the release for whatever reason, you can actually do that on the form as well, and it goes to our general counsel. So hopefully that will be a much easier process this time. And again, uh, we ask that you submit your speaker release on by February 2nd. Awesome. I am going to talk really quickly, hopefully, you know, this is important stuff, about uh, conference materials. So we encourage everyone, every program, to do conference materials. We, we know our attendees love materials, whether it's articles, forms, bullet points. They love them. Um, materials are required for CLE programs. You will hear us saying that again and again. And those of you that are CLE programs will be <laughs> hearing from our staff repeatedly. Materials will be made accessible to attendees through the conference app. And I'll talk a little bit more about the app. We will not provide any printed session materials at the sessions. Um, if you do, if you have something that you really need to have in print and really want to have the attendees have, you need to bring copies for the attendees. Um, as we get closer to the conference, you can be in touch with staff to say, do you have an estimate of the number of folks at our program? And we'd be happy to give you an estimate, but it is only an estimate. Uh, for our concurrent sessions, we don't ask our attendees to indicate what they're going to be attending ahead of time, so we don't really know who's going to walk through the room at that time. We can give you a, a sense of the size of the room and the number of chairs that will be in your program and any historical info we have of the number of attendees who have come to similar types of uh, sessions. Um, once we launch the app, we'll give you instructions on how to upload your session materials into the app. And for CLE programs in particular, that's the deadline of February 2nd. We do anticipate that there will be an opportunity for folks to add materials after the fact. Um, we are using an entirely new app this year. Uh, it's supported by Crowd Compass. We are loving it thus far. We used it for the Mediation Institute that the section organized in early October, which provides a lot of different functionality. And I've included here a few of the icons for the app. If you're familiar with these, you will see them. And we do want everyone to use the app because it's, uh, I'll say again, it's really amazing. It enhances your conference experience and also it, it is where you will need to go to get presenters, I'm sorry, the presentation materials. I was going to do a quick tour of the app um, so that you could see the one we used for the Mediation Institute, will be a, which will be a, um, a similar structure to the spring conference, even though the spring conference is about 100 times more complicated. But um, I'm going to do that at the end here, since I've noticed we are close to the bottom of the hour. Again, staff will stick, along, stick around as long as folks have questions. Um, but I do want to be really respectful of the all's time. And this is just a quick slide that where you want information about the Hyatt Regency San Francisco, you can you know, we will again share these slides with everyone. You can click on the meeting room diagrams if you want to have a sense of the space and the location of the conference. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Hyatt Regency, I'll do a really quick sell. It's a really fun hotel in a great location in San Francisco, very close to the Embarcadero. Um, and it's just it's a neat space. If anyone is a Mel Brooks fan, it has the the, hotel, the uh, elevators from high anxiety 
and I think it's been featured in a number of other um, great movies <coughs> as well. Um, quick summary here, when in doubt, go back to that presenter guide that Melissa has sent you all. And a quick plug here that if you have a question, um, look at the <coughs> presenter guide to see if it answers your question before you contact staff. If it doesn't, then please do contact us. We are here to help out. Um, quick summary of action items by today. We need that presenter agreement by Monday. Yes, Monday. We need organizers to submit the program edit link, as Melissa was reminding folks. Even if you don't have a title or description change or presenter change, we still do need you to submit that to click on the few additional new questions that we have for folks. Um, we also want folks to upload the bio and the picture to the ABA profile. And Melissa, did I skip over the slide? Because um, that's what I realized. Okay. I did. Yeah. So. Yes. This is this is actually a fairly important slide that I managed to skip over. Um, we need your bio and picture to come in through your ABA profile door. Um, there are instructions on how to do this on the presenter guide. Um, a, another big plea from me, don't send Melissa or me your bio or picture. It will get lost in our inboxes and we won't have it. <laughs> so, um, if you can upload it to the ABA profile, and again, there are instructions on how to do this. It's relatively simple. I actually changed my picture on the ABA profile yesterday just to see how um, difficult it is, and, and I could manage to do it within two to three minutes. Um, that will make sure that your ABA, your picture and your bio are always there on the ABA profile, and you control that information. It's not something that you have to send us different pictures when you update it. And Gina, can I jump in really quick and add something? Yes. Um, so I've gotten a few questions. I guess there's, it's a little bit confusing. Um, anyone who attends an ABA event gets an ABA profile. It doesn't necessarily um, mean that, you know, you're an ABA member. It doesn't have anything to do with your membership status. So as long as you attend one of our events, we have your information in our system, and that's what we mean by your ABA profile. And again, like Gina said, once you do it once, obviously if you've done our events before and you know you've already done it, you can disregard this, but it's just a great way for us to have your information and carry it over to any other events that you attend. Thank you. This um, is Kelly. I just want to make a plea for everybody to, to try to go through the app if you have questions. Um, and that's not working for you, you you can contact, but Gina and Melissa are basically doing the work of four or five people um, until we get some more staff or some staff that has left. So they really are doing multiple jobs in addition to their already complicated jobs. Um, so it's really helpful if you can try to navigate through the system yourself. If not, you can also contact Allison or I, um, and if we don't have the answers, we will find them out for you. If you could help me by, if you have a panel of people coordinating your questions so that the fact so that any of us don't get five different questions that we could answer or putting us all in a loop if you have a question that you think the other presenters on your panel have that would be great because then we'll just cut down the number of questions that we get that maybe we could answer and please do check back for the um, presenters information and other things because a lot of the questions um, are answered there. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Thanks. We tried to put a lot of information within that presenter guide. I realize it's overwhelming. <laughs> so it's one of the reasons we do this. Um, it's in another format. Um, quick links here again to, your, to the speaker release, the conference page, the conference registration for presenters. I'll pause here for a moment because we did not address it within a slide is there is a specific registration page for presenters. You can link to it from the conference main page. Just when you when you do go to register, um, take a moment and, and look at the page to make sure that you're registering through the right door and that will give you the access to the registration discount for presenters. You can also get to the agreement that's due today here, uh, the presenter guide that's the long extensive information and the one program pass information. And I'm going to stop for questions. I'm scanning through 
the ones uh, that I have received via chat. One of the ones I see is that if folks indicated in the initial proposal that they wanted CLE, wanted to be a CLE labeled program or not a CLE labeled program, you can change that now. So when you do that uh, edit program link, you can indicate differently now. And that is something that when we are looking at all of the updated programs as of next Tuesday, um, not that we will closely audit it, but we will look at that to make sure that the programs that now want CLE are appropriate for CLE and at a quick scan look like they will meet the requirements and that the programs for non-CLE are also appropriate for non-CLE. You should be forewarned that if there's a program that we think with maybe a little extra effort could be CLE, we may be calling you to say, can we, can we help you frame this as a CLE program? And I feel like I've been talking a lot, so I'm going to pause just in case there is a verbal question as I'm also um, scanning. Hi, this is Inga. Uh, I have a, a verbal question. Uh, the, for the room where you said there is no internet access that you could guarantee or that one should rely on, do you know if hotspots work in the rooms, if, if we have, can bring our own hotspot? I believe this is something that as we work with the hotel staff over the couple, next couple of months, um, I can give you more detail, but I have no reason right now to believe that a hotspot will not work. That's actually a, from past conferences has usually been a good solution to not having um, you know, good hotel provided wireless. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. And, and just a second question for uploading the bio and picture. You said there are instructions. Is that in the the overall instructions? for that, organize that the overall presenter guide. Yes, yes thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, this is Jennifer Brandt. I, I actually echo the question of the gentleman earlier in this conference um, call about being able to see the slides because I have not been able to get to see the slides. So is there a way I can Sorry, do that? Jennifer, I yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have the solution there. I will do okay. a troubleshooting post the call, we will share the slides with everyone, and we will also share a recording of the program with everyone. So if you are um, willing <laughs> to kind of live through it again, um, it, it will all be available. Okay, you. thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, one question I have is whether organizers need to chase all the speakers for pictures and bios, or have they all received reminders? Every individual presenter should have received a reminder for pictures and bios. If, you know, for the folks that haven't met all of our December 5th deadlines, we will start chasing you all down as of Tuesday. So if we need a picture or bio, um, we, we will contact the individual presenters. If it is something that uh, we are getting no response at all, yes, then we will reach out to the organizers to say, please help us get these folks to get the stuff in that we need. Now, the, the significant consequence of not giving us your picture and bio is that it won't appear on the app and it won't appear on our printed conference materials. So that, uh, and in this, I, I think, we, you know, in this image world where everything needs a picture to be interesting, I highly recommend you to get a picture out there. And for anyone who wants to stick with me, wants to go through the, uh, questions here, I'll show you how the Mediation Institute app looked so that you can kind of see how presenter pictures and bios just make it all more interesting. Um, one other question is about um, hotel rooms. You know, in the meeting planner speak, they talk sleeping rooms at the hotel. There is, there's a discount for all um, attendees and presenters. I actually don't have in front of me the hotel room rate as of the moment, the, that, that the ability to reserve a hotel room is open now, and I believe the discounted rate. It, Melissa, do you have this in front of you? Um, I am pulling it up. Sorry, one moment. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we'll wait for Melissa here to get specific questions. This information is also on the conference website, which is probably where Melissa is going right now. 
I am attempting. Well, you're looking for that. Uh, hi, this is Tim Hicks again. Uh, for some reason, I didn't get a um, a reminder about the bio and photo, and I also didn't get a notice of how to join the uh, the webinar uh, until I emailed you, I guess the day before yesterday or maybe yesterday, saying how do we join up, and then you forwarded me the message. So for some reason, it appears, I'm not sure this is true, but it appears that I'm not receiving or on the list for so Tim, we, uh, we basically included all of that in the presenter guide that we sent out. So I haven't yet uh -huh. sent anyone a specific reminder that says, I'm missing your photo and bio necessarily. Uh, okay. But we're Great. just kind of referring to the presenter guide list of requirements. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Sure. Melissa, did you get the info? I'm so sorry. My okay. internet is not cooperating. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, we we will make sure that you know, when we, we will <laughs> email all presenters later today or tomorrow once we have the recording, uh, and we'll give the recording, and we'll also, anything that we don't have, you know, the granular information right now for you, we'll include it in that email for everyone. And to Tina, I, I take it back. The conference room rate is $265 a night. Let's see. I'm not seeing any other questions that have come in to me via chat. Um, any other over the phone questions from folks? Okay. This is uh, Dean so, DiPilato. For some reason, um, uh, when I pull up on my November 7th email, the edit program link, the page that pulls up is doesn't have anything filled in. And I think it did at some point because I changed the dates that was available. But for some reason, that link is bringing up a, a blank proposal title, description, all that stuff. So, I, I assume it's supposed to already have our info. Yes, we do have your information. This is a really unfortunate drawback to this one system that we're using. Um, once you click on the program edit link and submit changes, if you need to submit them again for whatever reason, it's going to show up blank after you. Submit. I, I don't need to. I was just wanted to make sure you yeah, oh, okay. you got it. So I should I should be fine now. I don't need. To, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing. Um, okay. Yeah. The December fifth yeah. deadline. So you have your information. If anyone does need to resubmit, just so you know, just shoot me a quick email, and I just have to regenerate a link for you. So it's not a problem. We have the information. All right. Great. One other question I'm seeing here is if you have if there are folks that don't have uh, you know, haven't ever interacted with the ABA before as unbelievable as that might seem but have uh, not attended an ABA event or been a, a member of the ABA if you follow the uh, and Melissa can correct me if I'm wrong here if you follow the instructions that are uh, linked from the presenter guide they will be able to create a profile right? and it doesn't it doesn't make them a member it, doesn't mean that we will send them a bill or, or anything. It just means that we have their basic information within our database and can access it for adding it to the app and other needs. Um, all right, I am going to say we're, we're done with the major portion. For those of you that need to get on with the rest of your day on the first day of December, um, feel free to leave. I am going to just spend five minutes doing a quick overview of the app, just a tour of what we did for the Mediation Institute now. But this is so, you know, sort of I don't know, more for interest. So one question I have is how do I get out of the webinar since I wasn't able to – I'm hearing you all, but I can't get a stream. You're stuck now. You're here I'm for your I'm stuck in space, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you guys can <laughs> – when, when I me end down. the webinar, you all will be cut off. So whenever okay. anyone you know, has no further questions about the app or anything, and I click end <laughs> at the meeting, it, w it will end okay. for, for everybody in every way that you may or may not be joined in. Okay. Um, let me see if I can uh, quickly share my browser here. And... Uh, 
show you all the app. So, um, again, I had said that this was created via Crowd Compass. And when you log into the app, we will have the app password protected. It will be a fairly simple password. And uh, let me pause again for a moment here. So the app is it's uh, compatible with Android and Apple devices, and it also has a uh, you know, it's it's browser compatible as well. We learned it's not Kindle Fire compatible. So those of you who have Kindle Fire, we're sorry. Um, it's one of the devices that it does not work with. But it can still work on your browser on Kindle Fire, as I understand it. So um, we, we password protect it because there's a ton of information in here, including all of the conference materials. But we didn't want it to be too very difficult. So for our Mediation Institute, the, the password was Mediation. And then folks could get into all of the fabulous info on the app. Within the app main screen, there's the basics of what the event is. And then there is a fabulous bar that allows you to go to an activity feed, which is a, a, a discussion. It's basically a, a, a discussion board that you can use out here. There's the schedule. You can look at speakers. There's maps of the venue. Uh, we will load all of the pre-registered attendees will be in here. Conference materials can be accessed. Wi-Fi instructions to the extent that we do have Wi-Fi in the hotel, um, as well as the conference evaluations will be in here. And we found this was a really handy way to get a lot of feedback from uh, the folks who were at the Mediation Institute. I'm just going to do kind of a quick view of you know, the schedule. So if you come in here and you want to try to figure out what's going on on the first day of the event, the schedule does a nice little overview. This is, it actually works better, of course, on a, a device or phone than it does in the browser, but it works fine in here. And so you can see everything that is happening on that day of the event. And then in particular, if you want more information about a one session, and you can go and you can look at the, the 9 a.m. session on preparing for mediation, and it will come up with information about that session. It also has a nice link to the exact room where the session is. So you can pull up a map of that. And this is, this is great. And it will be particularly great within the hotel uh, that we are at on, um, in San Francisco because we will be on multiple floors of the hotel. And this will help people nav literally navigate the conference a lot better and get from session to session. Your description for the program will be in here. Uh, the, all of the presenters for the program will be listed here. And then as you continue to look at all the details of the program, this, there's also a survey. So as folks are sitting in the program, they can click on the survey and they can provide the evaluation for the program. Just click, 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 it's submitted. And it's not a piece of paper that gets lost or um, we have to do data entry <laughs> at the other end of that. And then the materials for the session will be posted below that. So uh, there is, at the moment, not a whole lot. Of, they're not data limitations for the materials, meaning the size limit can be fairly large. Um, I do believe we have a format limit, and that we will uh, convey to you. I think they either need to all, what I'm seeing here is all PDFs, um, and I think that may be the case. And that's something that as we figure out how you all upload materials into the system, we'll give you some much better instructions on how to do that. And then this is what I wanted to talk about with pictures and such. So then the presenters have their own page within the system linked to their program. So here I've pulled up Bruce Meyerson, and his bio is here. And you have the nice information. And it also tells me that Bruce Meyerson is on these two programs. So if I then wanted to say, I only want to go to programs that Bruce Meyerson is on, I can take a good look at those particular programs. And that's the end of my quick overview of this app, in case Melissa, who has worked within this app even more, had anything she wanted to add? Um, no, I don't think so. Just want to reemphasize it's, it's a really nice app. Um, 
We really encourage everyone to use it. And I'll add one more thing. It is new to us, so we are we are learning it quickly, and it has am amazing <laughs> functionality. But it's also a, you know a lot for us to learn. So this is also my explanation that we can't tell you at the moment how we want you to uh, upload the materials because we are learning how you will upload materials in the next couple of weeks. So with that, I'm done. Uh, unless there are any other questions from folks out there. All right. I'm not hearing any. Thank you again for those of you who have stuck with us for 50 minutes here. Uh, we will be available for questions and troubleshooting. And again, we'll, we'll share this recording and the PowerPoints with everyone within the next 24 hours. So enjoy the rest of your day, all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody.